Hi, I'm Eileen Roach, founder of Designs and Machine Embroidery, and thank you for joining me today. I'm excited to be here just like I am every Thursday. Today is back to basics, and I have a special guest that's going to be joining, but please um, type in and say hello uh, into the chat and because um, I'm anxious to hear from you. You know, I have a friend, Wendy Hansen, up in Connecticut, and she said, I hope you got my house picture. And Wendy, I did. And next week, I'll feature it here on Facebook Live. So thanks for the reminder for sure. Um, so make sure you um, type in and let us know that where you're watching from. We love to know where, you're, where you are. And I know much of the country is blanketed in you know, deep snow, cold, cold weather, and super cold weather coming. I understand my in-laws up in Minnesota are going to have like a negative a negative 34 tonight. Oh my goodness, that is really cold. Anyway, we are going to talk about hooping, navigating in the hoop, and you know how to hoop for multi-hoopings, right? Because that's always a challenge. But first, I would like to welcome my guest, Ashley Jones. Ashley is our lead educator at Dime, and she's been with us since 2014. Hi, Ashley. Hi, how are you today, Eileen? Great, welcome. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. Glad to be here. Excited to be sharing the things we're going to be talking about and absolutely cannot wait to see those small town charms. Oh, I know. They, and we have several to share, which is so exciting because, you know, this is really the first week that, um, they, you know, our viewers have been able to stitch the February small town charm. So anyway, you ready? You want to see some? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Let's take a look. Here we have um, Sue Lady. She turned her sweet shop into a bookstore. She's an avid reader. I know that because she did the Dime Doors all last year and she would often reference you know, her love of reading. So she has a book open on the table. Isn't that charming? That is, and I love the lights, the lighted awning. <laughs> The little fairy lights, they're yes. so cute. And she has columns. Look at the columns that she added. Gorgeous. And a, and a couple little puppies, little Dachshunds, right? Dachshunds. So cute. Yes, right. absolutely so creative. Yes, and she turned, so let's take a look at, you know, her fabric. That's supposed to be the fabric that was in the quilt shop in January. And so she added, uh, made it into like an applique and added backing fabric, which looks like a wood bookcase, and then just stitched all of those satin columns in solid thread, and they look like books. And I think it's great. Really nice. Very, very well done. Okay. Then we have Tracy Powell. Oh, look at the fabric that she selected for her wallpaper. Yeah. Right? And yeah. also her, her sidewalk. That's like perfect, just yeah. awesome. And I like the bright colors, you know, the lime, the pink, yeah. can't go wrong with that. No. You know, folks, Ashley, yeah, Ashley's living down in Key Largo. So I imagine there's a lot of key lime pie in your future. There is a lot of, <laughs> a lot of sweet shops with some key lime pie. Absolutely. And look at Cheryl McCombs. Is this great or what? McComb, I guess it is. Oh, she added some pets to the foreground and and heart-shaped balloons and her heart awning, heart little tiny hearts all over the awning. Boy, that's really great. Yes, so cute. Do, yeah, do you love the polka dot wallpaper? Oh, yes, absolutely, yeah. because it reminds me of sprinkles on the cake. Yes, and look at her uh, cake stands. She used gold metallic thread. Oh man, yes, I see that. Yeah, very, very nice. And here we have Carrie Fisher. She went kind of traditional, uh, but really great fabric that she selected for her building, right? It just has a yeah. tiny print, scale is just perfect. Notice her pots for her potted plants. Oh yeah. She, yeah, variegated thread. Mm -hmm. That looks really nice. Very yeah. rare. And she also used my cake superior, which I just chuckled at. I thought that was a lot of fun, that name. And here we have Donna Branton. So she has named it, I think it's DJ Sweets. DJ Sweets. Isn't that fun? It is. Yeah. Yeah, her That's fabric cool. choice. It almost looks like um, the sun is coming up on the right side and hasn't yet made it to the left side with right. 
the change in the fabric. Very really cool. cool. It must be a modeled, maybe a, you know, I don't know. Very interesting fabric though. And of course her wallpaper, I hope you can see the detail on her wallpaper. It's a tiny little tone on tone print and it works just beautifully. Now, Judith, look what, well, Havana can sew. That's how I, you know, when I go out on, on social media and I search for hashtag dime sew along, mm -hmm. um, I find your photos and whatever your name is that you're logged into on social media, like Facebook, uh, that's how I find you. So I'm guessing Havana can sew's name is Judith, but you know, that's a total guess. I have no idea, right? <laughs> She took the time to stop and change the thread of her cakes, right? She's got it like a chocolate cake on the left, a vanilla cake in the center, and then um, another type of cake, like a strawberry cake on the right-hand side. Oh, isn't that beautiful? That is so cute. Yeah. And she used a variegated thread for her wood trim to frame that um, complex fill. And then a very interesting effect on an awning. She has it kind of in a circular pattern. Yeah. Very, very nice, right? I like that. Yeah, it reminds me of those domed awnings that are just over a door yeah. sometimes. So yes. yeah. she's a step ahead of me, or he, maybe it, he isn't, maybe it's, it is a he. Um, she's a step ahead of me because I've been working on that for a future, you know, um, small town charm that we get that dome awning that is very common in lots of, uh, you know, lots of boutiques and lady shops, things like that. Okay, and here we have Kerry Richard. Wow, perfect placement, really fussy cut her applique. Can you see yeah. how that print is really centered in the window so well? Yeah, it looks really nice. And look at her windows up on the second story. Yeah, she has a potted plant in one window. I know. Adorable, yep. And she kind of went for a nighttime thing instead of using like the dark gray, yeah. she used um, a gold, make it look like, you know, evening. I don't, well, I, that's yeah, my guess, I anyway. Super cute. Yeah. And she added vinyl to her um, her window and her door to really make it look like glass. I didn't go that extra step, but. <laughs> People are so creative. I love I it. It's awesome. And then Marianne McCain Dotty, she did yummy cakes and more. Oh, that's so fun. She added a welcome mat in the foreground. And in that awning, awning fabric, it doesn't really look like an awning. I mean, it I swear does. I've walked down streets in, you know, different towns and have seen fabric just like that. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. And uh, of course, I don't never know how to say this poor woman's name, Renal Paulson, but um, she's been doing dime doors all along and is following along with the small town charms. And her work is exquisite. I mean, everything is always execute, executed perfectly. And I like the awning fabric that she chose. It would not have been something that I would have gravitated to, but once complete, it really is quite effective and looks beautiful. Yeah, I love the rose print too behind her cake. Yes, very delicate and inviting. Yeah. And her cake, again, she did a metallic thread for her cake stand. Really, very, very nice. nice. Yeah. Okay, and then Shannon Margaret Brott, she did Sweet Angel. Treats Bakery, and look at her fabric, right? Her fabric already had sweets on yeah. it, right? So, so cute. I wonder if that was in her stash or did she have to go out and find that? Um, I don't know, yeah, I don't know, but it's super cute. It's really cute. And then she took the cupcake and she did two mirror image them over the door. Looks very nice. I love that. I love that. And so hers, I'm assuming is maybe a, a um, mug rug since she doesn't have her awning maybe maybe yeah maybe she's just you know some of them write notes and i always say i'm going to remember the notes and then i don't um, and that's embarrassing <laughs> i should you know grab the caption and put it on the slide and so forth but you know folks truth it's be told you know i do this at night when i'm watching tv with my husband or you know that kind of thing so it, i try to jam it into my schedule oh but sue brown in Sueville. She's got a Very sweet cool. <laughs> <laughs> So, so all of Sue's charms are going to be Sueville charms. She'll have a whole village whenever, yeah. whenever they're done. The Sueville Village. Yes, uh, which I think is really fun to name your town. And I was thinking that we would call ours here at Dime Dimeton. 
you know. Oh, yeah. Like Downton Abbey, but Dimeton, because we're just so <laughs> elegant here. No, I'm only kidding. But, the, you know, kind of fun. Right. Well, how about um, all of our viewers? Are any of you naming your towns? And let's see. Uh, Alice Stewart Cunningham says, when exactly do these dimes come out? I She thought the first Thursday. So they come out the last Thursday of the month. Like the last Thursday of January, I revealed the February small town charm. So that's how it works, you know, because in publishing, you're always supposed to be a step ahead. And so that's what we try to do here is publish it. The last Thursday of the month will be a new reveal. And then if you are friends with uh, Sue Brown over at OML, she does a sew along on the Saturday following the last Thursday. And that often is the first Saturday of the month, but not always, check your calendar. <laughs> so, okay, just thought I'd, oh, let's see, Paula, uh, Retha, she likes Dimeton. Yeah, pretty fun, right, Retha? Pretty fun. You know, someone left a comment a long time, like a week or so ago, I think it was Misha Pennington said, you know, that I should really address, um, people sharing or selling these designs that are at my gift to, to you. And, you know, even though they are a gift, they are not for you to sell to someone else. So I would appreciate if you would respect common copyright law. And that is um, to not, you know, take someone else's design and try to make them your own. Okay. And, and resell. So just let's all be on the square up and up. Okay, so, and then Sue Brown's Sweet Shop, she did some beautiful fabrics. I, you know, I love that. I think it's a K faucet. I couldn't swear on it, but I bet I have some of that in my stash, that uh, the background fabric. And then she has that really pretty sidewalk fabric, the purple. Sue's fabrics are always very, very colorful. And I, so I think Sue, Sueville would be a really fun place to visit, right, Ashley? Yeah, absolutely. It looks like from this uh, small town charm that it's a happy place with fun and excitement. And so, yeah, all these playful yeah. colors. I'd go to Sueville. I'd definitely I'd go to Sueville. Sueville. Yeah, yeah, really <laughs> slick. Love it. Okay. And then this is her five by seven. So if you remember, there are two versions of the February uh, of the small town charm every month. You get a, a five by seven version and then a seven by 12 versions. So um, the uh, the five by seven this month was actually three hooping. So it's two hoopings, what you see uh, that are stitched to the fabric. And then the awning is a third separate um, hooping, but many of you have already stitched this and you know that. And if you haven't, you can still go and download it. And all of the instructions are included. There's a, a whole PDF of instructions with illustrations. So, you know, you'll, you'll be in good hands. But Sue Brown, I love the awning fabric she chose here. So a clamshell design that kind of looks like candy, you know, melted can not melted candy, but the kind of candy chips that you use to melt candy, right? To make yeah. that. Yeah. And let's see. Uh, Melinda is new. You can get the previous designs for January. They will be up on our website. If you go to that link that's scrolling across the bottom of the screen right now, you will find January and February are there now. And secret to tell you, um, the 2020 doors are still there. We put them back up because we had our customer service was a bit swamped. Even though I told everybody that on, then I told them for months that on New Year's Eve, we were taking them down and y'all didn't listen. And then you, you know, call my poor customer service team and they're just like, can we put them back? So they're up temporarily. If you want them, grab them now. They will not be up much longer. Let's see. We all, we all have good intentions to get things yeah. done, but, right. um, but yeah, time runs out and then there we are. Right. Right. And you know, it doesn't mean you have to stitch it. Just go grab it yeah. and download it. That's yeah. all. Just go down yeah. it, down, grab it, and download it. Hi, Judy Quilt. Well, you got to get going. That's your goal this weekend. So great weekend thing project for sure. And Sandy Akuri, she says Sueville is the second happiest place on earth. 
So what's the first, Disney? What's the first, Sandy? <laughs> what's the first? Are you going to say Disney World? <laughs> Let us know what you think is your first. Yeah, yeah, what's your happiest place? Yeah. Okay, one more. And then we have Lisa Granley, and I'm not going to try to pronounce what she has written, but I, I did a Google Translate, and it is Norwegian for the village baker. So am I right, Lisa Granley? Or if you're watching, tell me. <laughs> yeah, that is so cool. And what is her? what are the little icons on her wallpaper? Is it just a pattern, or are they actually something? Oh, yeah. Was oh, it flowers? Yes, it looks like a flower. It looks like a yeah. rose with kind of a micro dot between each of the um, each of the roses. Yeah, very nice. Well, a nice scale for the yeah print for the pattern. So yes, yeah, absolutely. So, so Sandy Curie, she said yes. The happiest place on earth is of course Mickey's, Mickey's home. home. But Sharon Cabral says my happy place is my sewing room. And right. I second that. Me too. Right. I love hanging out in there and I don't get to do it enough. Shh. I know. I definitely don't. <laughs> and um, let's see, Lisa Granley said, I was correct on the Village Baker. Thank oh, you. nice. Yeah. Oh, look at here. We have to read this from Lynn. Today is her last day of work and retirement starts tomorrow. No way. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. We wish you many happy hours, many happy days in your sewing room, right? Yes. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. She's going to be so busy now that she's retiring. That's right. <laughs> that's right. You know, I'm very happy for you. Congratulations. Yeah. And then Roz, that's your good friend, Roz, I think. Roz Norman. Here's just Roz. Oh my gosh. That is my yeah. buddy. I know. She says, hey, Meet Grace. her sewing room is her happy place. Yeah. Yes. So Ross yeah. has a lot of fabrics to choose from in her sewing room. Does she? Does yeah. she? She um, does. Yeah. So it is a happy place. She does yeah. love it. And so. our friend Reen Wilcoxon piped in. She says, does she hopes I add a flower shop to the series. It's oh. definitely on the list. So can't tell you when. You have to stay tuned. Have yeah. to stay tuned. And lots of people wishing her a happy retirement. That's really sweet. That um, and Holly says, I, I want to um, I want to retire as well and sew all day. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Me too. Okay. So we're really here. You know, we have a reason, <laughs> right? It's this, this fun, this fun that we're having. That's the reason and the fellowship and communication. Yeah. Yeah. But aren't you always so impressed with uh, people's creations? I mean, I'm oh. always so inspired by what they do. It, it's just Absolutely. awesome. I know. Yeah. I think I'm creative. And then I see things that other people do. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, yeah. who would have ever thought? So people really do think outside the box. They do. They do. And, you know, it, I always called sewing and embroidery a solitary sport. Because it is something that you pretty much do in the privacy of your own home. I mean, you know, before COVID, we occasionally had the opportunity to gather, you know, at dealers or large quilt shows and share our passion for sewing, embroidery, and quilting with others. But this year, you know, we're really not able to do that. But we have found a way to connect virtually, which is amazing. It really is. Right. Absolutely. And I've had some, especially early on, whenever we really were um, separated from all of our friends and family, I feel like we do a little more now than we did when this all started. But friends um, that were other sewing friends, we would just get together on Zoom and just sew. You weren't even watching what somebody was sewing, but we would just chat and visit just like we were having a sewing group. So cool. just like an nice. open camera. Yeah. 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 It's, it's really great. It's really amazing how we've all been able to stay together. And, and so I guess what I was really getting to, even though we're working alone, everybody's work, you know, what they come up with on their own. Yeah, many are inspired and, and some are, you know, like part of the OLM, OML gang with Sue Brown and, you know, Judy Quilt says Sue has really encouraged them to think outside the box. So for sure. But it's just really amazing. Um what people do on their own. And I know they're not all just, you know, joining in a, uh, in a virtual class. They're just working in their own room. And Retha Ranke, she meets uh, her son on FaceTime on Wednesday and they have a so date. He's in Phoenix and she's in Wyoming. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. 
That's really nice. Good for you. Yeah. Great way to stay in touch. Okay. Okay. Oh, listen to Stephanie Hardy. She says, I've been learning tons this year virtually because she's too timid to go in person. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, that is one thing you still are in the privacy of your own home. So it, I know many people at events were not confident in their skills and were a little concerned about, you know, sewing next to someone that they didn't really know in, in fear of making mistakes. Or, you know, I used to do a funny thing, a funny uh, kind of routine about stress free sewing in an event because, you know, you start out really good and then, you know, your neighbor's already got her ruffles done and her ruffles are more straight and they're not, you know, crossed over like yours are. And, you know, and it can really get you in a dither. So when you're sewing at home, nobody knows. Nobody knows. Absolutely. Yeah, it's true. It's a uh, competitive sewing when you're all there at the event together, right? Absolutely. And, you know, here's a shout out to our friend Joanne Banco. And she's a kind comment. She said, you're happily, provi I'm providing happy sewing times for many sewing enthusiasts. Well, thanks, Joanne. Joanne, And actually, she's my guest next week, which we'll talk about more at the end of today's program. So that's fun. Absolutely. Oh, and here, one more before we move on to what we really came for. So Lynn says her, her daughter lives in the Tampa area and refer to the residential edition as the Tamptons. And she thinks <laughs> she'll make her small town part of the Tamptons. I love it. I, I like the Tamptons. That sounds fancy. That's yes. the fancy part of Tampa. <laughs> well, the Tamptons are going to be playing some serious football this weekend, right? Yes, they are. That is so uh -huh. true. I can't believe that's here already. I know. I know. Okay. You know, a lot of people will be sewing while their husband's watching the games. Yeah, maybe. I don't. I personally love football, so I'll be watching. I'm a little sad that the Green Bay Packers were knocked out by Tom Brady. <laughs> Someday he'll retire. Just saying. <laughs> Be patient. <laughs> I, know. I have family all over the country, you know, so we have, uh, we follow a variety of teams and uh, sometimes have some very funny group texts. I'm just a kind of wondering what's going to happen this Sunday. But anyway, okay, small town charm. The five by seven was two hoopings. And that second hooping was pretty tight. Um, you know, a, a pretty close to fill in that hoop. So let's just, we're gonna talk about um, how it worked out. So I built my house and I instructed you to build your sweet shop from the second story down, instead of like we would do in real life where we would build a foundation, do the first story and then the second story. So in this case, and that's because we want the satin edge of the first story to cover the raw edge of the second story. So first story had to be stitched first. And here you can see my template, I, I printed it in color and you can see that it is covering up the bottom of the second story. And, you know, eventually I want to get to this point, right? I want to be able to center my needle right over that hooped fabric with the template in place. But before we do that, we're going to talk about the number one thing you would need to do when you're hooping and that's keep that hoop still, right, Ashley? Yes, absolutely. It's so painful when your hoop's moving and your stabilizer's moving and your item is moving. It's like trying to hit a moving target and absolutely. get it all lined up perfectly. Absolutely. So you so have some great tips to share. I do, I do. So I wanted to share with everybody um, the hoop mat and how wonderful it is at keeping your hoop nice and stable. Um, this is a silicone mat that is has a rubbery texture. If you could feel from the camera, like it, it's almost like just a soft, very smooth um, texture, but it's great for keeping any hoop in place. It works with your standard hoops or your magnetic hoops, multi-needle hoops, uh, sticky hoops, which I know Eileen's going to use today. But anytime you are hooping, if you hoop on your hoop mat, it will make certain that your hoop is going to stay in place. So let me switch over to my camera that shows the, the hoops and we're going to see exactly how well this works. So I have a cutting mat right now on top of my hoop mat. A lot of times I used to hoop on my cutting mat. And so when you're hooping on your cutting mat or a table, your hoops will easily slide around. I mean, it doesn't even take much to move them all around. But 
you don't want to deal with that when you're trying to hoop. So I'm going to remove my cutting mat and then expose my hoop mat. Now, one thing that's nice about the hoop mat is I actually do store it under my cutting mat because it will keep my cutting mat also from moving around when I'm cutting. So I have it underneath the cutting mat and then I can just take it out from under and put it on top when I'm ready to do my hooping because the cutting area in my sewing room is the only place that doesn't have stuff all over it. I don't know if you guys can relate. So, but I've got both hoops. So I wanted to show you that it really does work with any uh, hoops that you're using. So now when I push against these, it's not moving around like it was easily. And so when I'm doing my hooping, I don't have to worry about the base of the hoop sliding around. It even works with multi-needle hoops for any of those um, of you guys that are lucky enough to have a multi-needle machine. You can see here that when I'm working with the multi-needle hoop, it, this isn't moving around. So when I separate my pieces and I'm ready to hoop, I'm not having to worry about the base of the hoop um, sliding around while I'm trying to hit that that moving target. So the other thing that I love is the um, these bold lines that are on here and the one inch grid can help you um, make sure everything gets placed really well. So I'm going to just hoop a couple of things and show you. Um, so with our uh, snap hoop um, here, so the snap hoop monster, I got the five by seven. We normally separate the pieces and I've put the uh, rulers on the base of my hoop too. Um, it's just something I do uh, if I have any extra rulers to get it lined up. But when you're doing a quilt sandwich or you're trying to make sure something's like really perfectly straight in the hoop and Eileen's going to talk about the, um, the importance of that when you're getting your charm lined up, but the base of my hoop is not moving and then I can easily place my magnet and drop that into place. And I don't have to worry about the base sliding all over the place while I'm doing that. And then with our standard hoops, so this um, hoop here, I would line up. You can see the, the notches on your inner ring here, and um, I can line that up and get it perfectly centered. That helps me with uh, placement from time to time, especially if you have uh, some sort of sheer fabric. But the base of my hoop is going to stay in place. A lot of times this is what's happening. We're, we're, we're doing this number here, trying to get our hoop lined up because we can't see through it because we have fabric. But the nice thing is when I'm moving this all around until I get it right into place, the base is not running away from me. So it's like having a really good friend hold your hoop steady while you're doing uh, that hooping. So I love the hoop mat. You can see it's like very soft buttery. You can fold this up. I mean, I'm matching to, to create a crease, but it doesn't crease. So you can roll it or fold it uh, for storage, either one. So, so that's the, the hoop mat. So if you don't already have one, it's definitely a must have in your sewing and embroidery room to help keep your hoop in place. So what did you think, Eileen? Do you think that's something that everybody should own? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'm not alone on that. Like Alexis Raymond Melinda said that she could not have done the five by seven building without her hoop mat, hoop mat and pal too, which I'm, sh I'm going to show next. But she said she's not sure how she ever embroidered without either one. A good comment for sure. You know what I love that you showed? You put your cutting mat over yes. your hoop mat. So that yes. does double duty, you know, uh, makes good use of the space in your sewing room for sure. And Judy Quilt says, be careful, it is not a cutting mat. No. She has two sections with scotch tape on it. I, I have several hoop mats that are smaller now. You know, I have, I have small fours and small eights and I found other uses for those tiny things. Yeah. But, um, and so has team members here, you know, in this room that I'm speaking in right now, it's kind of a nice spacious room. And it is also my workspace. So I have hoop mats, uh, I have cutting mats and rulers. And my cutting mat is blue, was blue. We got rid of the blue one because many that times I'd come into work and here's a rotary cutter and two pieces of a hoop mat, you know, people, <laughs> that just, they're not familiar, that they don't really sew. Frankly, they shouldn't be in this room, I'm just saying, but anyway. <laughs> uh, yes. it's all fun, yeah. But yeah, yeah and definitely is, 
it's Go good ahead. for keeping your mat in place. I cut on a um, table that just is a smooth table. So nothing holds my hoop mat in place. And so, or my uh, cutting mat in place. So it does yeah. slide around, but the hoop mat mm -hmm. helps keep that stable when I'm cutting. And my cut mat is a different color than my hoop mat. So that, helps. that is actually a very good point. Yeah, it really helps. Uh huh. And Sharon Cab Cabral said that your instructions are so clear and your teaching is always so complete. Oh, I agree. You. Absolutely. You're an excellent speaker and uh, so knowledgeable, you know, not your first rodeo, right? That's true. That's true. Thank you. Yeah. And so Cindy Hart wants to know, how do you center your project with the magnetic hoop? So we're going to do that next for sure. Is it my turn? Yeah, I think it okay. is. All right. So I'll head over to the overhead cam and show you what we're going to do here. So here I have, so this globe that you see this white thing right here, that's my perfect alignment laser PAL 2. And, you know, I have to leave it in the camera shot or my laser beam would not be visible. But first I want to show you that I've printed a template of the first story of the sweet shop on our print and stick target template paper. And when I store it, I make sure I always store it on the shiny side. So you can see that shiny side as compared to the other side, which is flat. Always store it on the shiny side. And then once removed, we're going to align that first story with the second story. And here's my arrow. So I'm making sure I'm dead center. And I'm also keeping an eye on those satin edges that they are aligned outside. And then I just smooth that down. And then I'm going to show you in a standard hoop. So I have my pal right here, I'll turn that on. And I am aligning the notches on my hoop <clears throat> with the beam. And I know you can't see the beam that well on this heavy black line, but you can see it over the hoop marks itself. Now, a good tip when you are using this technique, always open that outer ring as far as you can. Make, you know, you don't want to make it fall apart, but you do want to have nice, ample, open um, outer ring. And then you're going to position your template on the fabric right over um, your outer hoop and centering that laser on that crosshair. And then we just very carefully take that inner ring and I like to work from the bottom away from me and I make sure that that is kind of snug at this end and then with both the hands I just insert that inner ring and then I am dead center and so when I take that to the machine I then center my needle over that crosshair right there dead center and I'm ready to stitch okay so that's a standard hoop now, I know many people are afraid to hoop, so they go topless. I mean, hoopless. Did I say topless? I didn't mean that. I meant hoopless. I'm only kidding. Um, I like topless. I like topless because really that's what it is. I mean, the yeah. bottom is a hoop, but the top, mm, we're not doing the top. So this is a sticky hoop, right? So this is a flat metal hoop going to be recognized by my machine. It has sticky stabilizer adhered to the bottom. This is all sticky. You can hear it, right? And uh, I have my centering rulers, which come with the sticky hoop, aligned with the laser. And then I just take that template and smooth the, begin to smooth the fabric onto the sticky stabilizer, making sure that that crosshair is aligned with the laser. Smooth it down and then use the, um, the board that comes with it to transport that to the machine because you don't want to put your hand through, you know, underneath. You don't want to put it through. So I always put that shield or the board that comes with it and transport that to the machine. Okay, so that's the sticky. They, they were the easy ones, right? Okay, and I guess you heard that when I removed that um, shield, my hoop snapped together, so I'll peel that apart. Okay, I too put rulers on the bottom of my hoop and um, <clears throat> I have my zero al aligned with the laser top, left, right, and bottom. And again, I'm going to take that fabric with the template and smooth that down. And then I will take my magnetic frame 
and I'm going to position it vertically. Now my attachment is on this side. So I'm going to do it on this outer edge and I'm making sure that, oh, you can't see that, but what I'm doing here, I can, I don't want to move my, no, my pal, but I'll do it up here. So I have the edge of the magnetic top is aligned with the metal on the bottom. And I can just feel that. And then I'm just going to very carefully drop that down in place, <laughs> keeping the fabric smooth. And there I am. I am just about dead center when I slide that hoop into position. Now what I'm doing is aligning the bottom frame with the top and it is dead center. So easy to do. Well, not easy to do. You know, that is challenging to find the absolute center of a magnetic hoop. It can be, but uh, it is doable. Let's see what kind of questions we have. Can you use this smaller um, PAL? Yeah, you most certainly can use this smaller PAL. Now, the small PAL beam, because it's small, so it's uh, short, its beams are not as long because the distance from the beam to the work surface is a short distance. To get longer beams, you raise the PAL and put it on a, you know, a couple books or something like that so that you can raise it up and get longer beams. Let's see. How would you use it on a multi-needle hoop? Same thing. Yeah, same those thing. notches. Yeah, same. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Centered over the, yeah. So the multi needle hoop that I've got right here beside me, it does uh -huh. not have on the the base part. It doesn't have those notches, and so mm -hmm. I would leave the inner ring um, and the outer ring together in order to get my mm -hmm. pal lined up with those marks. Mm -hmm. And then when you're ready to hoop, if you're on your hoop mat, when you take the top part out you won't have to worry about this moving and it'll still be aligned even though you don't see those notches since you remove the inner part. Right. Okay. And Deborah Huck wants to know, can you order the rulers for the sides? Yes, you can. They are in our shopping cart now. So if you jump over there, you could find them. And Catherine is waiting for the sticky hoop for Janome 500E next week. Yes. No way. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. That is awesome. Secrets out. <laughs> That's why you should watch Facebook Live because you learn all the secrets. What's coming, right? Yeah. And Janome 500 is not the only one. Oh. Just saying. Yeah. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's see. Um, can I buy a sticky hoop for the FOF yet? Hmm, wonder if that's coming with its friend, Janome. What do you think? How large are the finished designs? Let's take a look. Let's measure them. Um, Cause somewhere I have measurements. So let me get a ruler. <laughs> and so the, uh, well now you're gonna see my horrible backside, but anyway. So this is eight inches tall. Ugh. If there's two ways to pick up a ruler, right? I always pick it up the wrong way. So it's just a fraction over eight inches. So it's like eight and an eighth tall. And its width is five and five and a quarter. Okay. And then on the seven by 12, the seven by 12 is designed to fit in our um, frame. So the finished size is actually nine inches wide, I believe, because by the time you turn it and all of that, yeah, so it's actually a square. It's nine by nine when you get the awning in place and so forth. Because um, by the time you turn it, you lose some seam allowance and bulk. And um, so that's how it comes out. Yeah, let's see. Lots of questions here. Hang on a second. Uh, she's a, a brother in Novus 4000D. Um, yeah. We have I a think that's the same kind of attachment as the newer machines, though. So yeah, the one that I just showed, right? Yeah, um, yeah the five by seven yeah. would. Yeah, Margot coming Cunningham. Um, did your hoop look just like my hoop? Yeah. Attachment wise, let me bring it over so you can see. Yeah, 
Does your hoop look like that? Is that the kind of hoop that you take? Then it applies to your machine. Yeah. Here's the thing. If you, if you don't find your machine on our compatibility chart, you know, but you know that you can use the five by seven, seven, six by 10, seven by 12, eight by 12, you know, all of those with your manufacturer, then you can use ours. They're identical. They're identical. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Deborah Huck says, scroll up. And yeah, so one of our team members, Dawn Andrew, put in a link for um, the rulers. So you can't click on it here, but if you go to her comment, copy and paste, you will um, see them. Yeah. Okay. All right. Awesome. And Margo says, yes, it looks just like that. So then you can use it for sure. Yeah. You can use a lot of our hoops for um, sticky, monster, all of those. Yeah. Okay. So I know you have, talk about sneak peek. Uh, right. So I want to share with everyone. We have a lot of um, our Dime Inspiration software users out there, or maybe you've considered getting some of our Dime software. And um, we are going through a revamp with our software support website. And I wanted to share that with you. There will still be more changes to come, but there's a lot of good information out there for you to get help, the technical support that you need. But um, yeah, so I just wanted everybody to see it. So you ready to take a look? I think so. I All think right. so. You know, oh, I want I people to understand that, boy, we've been we swamped here, really, really busy during COVID, but we are making great strides in improving our technical support and our customer care team. So we appreciate your patience while we um, ramp up for this new increased demand. So thank yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. So what are you yeah, showing I'm us, sure. Ashley? Yeah, I think everybody's going to love it. So our um, website is inspiredbydime.com. This is all of the information related to our software and designs. So inspiredbydime.com will give you a lot of information. I'm not going to go over all of these tabs, but I wanted to draw attention to the support tab because there have been some really nice additions. And like I said, there are more things coming. So if you own our software already, um, definitely come and visit this site. So I'm just going to start by going to the help center just to, sh to give you an idea of some of the things that are changing. Um, most of you know, if we are, if you already have any of our dime software, or maybe you've downloaded our free embroidery tool shed and that tool shed is actually um, the place that all of our software is now housed. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that too in a bit, but these really awesome, links are very intuitive so you can get the support that you need so here for software support if you need help installing or registering this is where you would go um, if you need help using my software you know click this link and it'll take you to where you need to be if you're having issues with design collection so this is the link and then software updates for those of you that are not familiar all of our software gets free updates for for the entire life um, and so you sometimes want to know what was added new. You can click here to find out what new features were added to your software for free. So this is the most current update and you can click this link here that gives you a list of every addition that was added to the software and when it was added. So that's a really nice place to go to see what you got for free. Um, and then these other links here, the community forum. Um, this is a fantastic place for um, education on the software. And most of this is free to you. We have a Facebook group. If you click this link, it'll take you to our Dime Inspiration User Software Group where you can ask questions. This is a Dime created Facebook group. This is not a user created group. So this is monitored by Dime staff. I know Eileen's on there. I'm on there. And we answer questions um, directly to you guys from the Facebook group. So check that out. Um, also, the Dime YouTube channel has hundreds of hours of video help. I want to click this to show you an easy way to get to the videos. When you open up our YouTube channel, 
we have all of the past live videos, but if you go to the playlist, it actually will sort everything for you. And if you're looking for videos on how to use Perfect Stitch Viewer, vintage software, micro fonts, any of these categories for your software, you can click these and it has additional videos for using the software. So I'm gonna go back to the Inspired by Dime page. The Inspiration Forum, is um, similar to Facebook, but if um, a user does want to go and check this out in a different place, you do not have to have Facebook. This is um, just a forum where you can go and ask questions. Now I'm already signed in as myself, and so I can see these questions. I can click on any of these and get answers. So between this and the Facebook group, there's a lot of user questions out there that may already have been answered that you could search especially if it's late at night and you want an answer quickly. This is a great way to get it. So I'm going to sign out here just to show you when you click that link, if you haven't already created a login with our inspiration support, create that here. That would allow you to access that forum and it's free. So why not? So let me go back and show you the last couple of links there. So here we have a link to some workbooks that you could purchase to help learn your software. There are ones for My Lace Maker, for Perfect Embroidery Pro um, that you could purchase. And it will give you some really good details for learning your software. So if you like to step through projects, that's a great place. You could purchase those. And I'm not sure if you guys knew or not, but Dime actually offers a private 30 minute software session with an educator. So both Ayn McCarthy and myself are educators that participate in this 30 minute private session. You can sign up for one of these by going to this page, clicking on either Ayn or I, and it will take you to our schedule. This is a paid 30 minute session. You can choose the date that you want to sign up for an event. It will then offer the times for you to do that. You select the time, confirm the time. It's going to ask you a set of questions and then you'll pay the fee and it will send me an email and you an email with a Zoom link. You and I will meet at that scheduled time on Zoom. I will have my software open. You'll be able to see my face and ask me any question that you want about any of your Dime software. So that is an addition to our software support that Dime added um, last year to help you guys get the support you need for learning your software. So that's a great tool um, also. So that's our support and education. Now, if you are brand new to Dime software, go to the download and installation option. There is a great video that is very detailed for installing your software. When you install any Dime software, if you purchase My Quilt Planner or if you purchase um, My Lace Maker, Word Art and Stitches, every one of our software are now inside of Embroidery Toolshed. So when you install your new software, this tells you the steps to go to. You'll install Embroidery Toolshed and then you merely activate the software that you purchase. So it's very, very simple to do. And this lays it out in such an easy method that anybody could get this done. But of course, if you have issues, you can always go to the help center and contact technical support if you're having issues. So that's a very easy, easy way to um, get started with any software support or issues that you have or just learning your software. Um, so now let me um, show you, I want to go to my computer screen that shows my software and just show you what Embroidery Toolshed looks like. You and know, Ashley, Ashley yeah. I don't think people know that Embroidery Toolshed is free. Oh, really? Like uh, you know, that template that I showed for doing the second, adding the first story to the second story, 
can be created in our free embroidery tool shed software. So even if you aren't one of our current users of our paid software, you most certainly have the ability and the, you know, the opportunity to download embroidery tool shed for free. And you can create templates in there, resize designs, copy, paste, mirror, merge, all kinds of fun stuff, right? Yeah, good point. So yes, if you don't have any embroidery software, Embroidery Toolshed is the perfect place to get you started because as Eileen said, it is a free download. And when I go back, I can actually show you where to go for that. But what Eileen's referring to in Embroidery Toolshed um, is printing a template. So here I'm inside of Embroidery Toolshed and this is just the free version. I don't have any other software installed. And I know that because in my shopping cart here, there are no other check marks. This check mark designates the software that I have installed. So on this computer, it's only the free embroidery tool shed. So I can open a design in the software and I have the ability to print a template. So I click the print option. And now this is a much smaller um, design than what you're using for your small town charm, but it will print any size design, even if you have to do it on multiple sheets of paper. But look how it gives that crosshair. That's exactly ac actually what Eileen used to get her design perfectly lined up. So printing templates is a free tool that's in this tool shed. So think of embroidery tool shed as a tool shed. When you buy a tool shed or you start a tool shed, you start with some very basic tools and that's the tools that you're getting for free in Embroidery Tool Shed, like being able to open and read and write to any design format, save designs, you can print, you can watch your design stitch out with the slow redraw option. So I can see exactly how it's gonna stitch before I get to my embroidery machine. I have the ability to resize the design. It does recalculate the stitches so I can resize it. I can change colors. I can um, rotate the design. So with Embroidery Tool Shed, we give you a free set of tools. Sometimes with your tool shed, you need a specialty tool. And that's where other pieces of software come into play. So over here to the right, if you have purchased any of our other pieces of Dime Inspiration software in the past, or you're thinking about it, inside of your tool shed, you would click the ellipse button and just choose to activate, and you'll enter your serial number there. It will activate your software, so that you will then have all of the specialty tools that come with this additional purchase. So think of it like your tool shed. So we give you some free tools to start. You can purchase specialty tools in the future when you need them. But just remember your tool shed holds all of your tools. It gives you the ability to use all your tools in your one tool shed. You don't have to go into the house or your neighbor's tool shed to use your tools anymore. They're all in your shed. So what do you think, Eileen? Is that good or do we need to show anything else? No, but you know, Laura wanted to know, and I'm not gonna to try to pronounce her last name. <laughs> Zidlowski, maybe, guessing. Lots of Z's and Y's. Um, yeah. How do you save, you know? So how do you save and how many formats and how do I get yeah. it over to my machine? So super easy. So here I've got my design still on the screen. So if I want to save this in order to stitch it out, I just choose file and save as, and I can choose from any of these formats. These are all the formats that are included in embroidery tool shed. So I can save to all the formats for all your home embroidery machines and even some commercial formats also. So I can save to PES, um, I can save to HUS, VIP, VP3, EXP, DST, JEF. Um, so all the formats that anyone would need are in this free program. And then you save it, you, you select the location, right? I usually select the USB. I only save um, embroidery designs in the working format, like a PES on the USB to put into the machine. I save my original native file, 
in my case, C2S. I make all of my embroidery designs in our software programs, and that's the native file format. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I what I generally do is I save my C2S format, which is the native format, like Eileen said. I save that on my computer so I can get back to it forever. Um, and I only put my machine format on my USB stick. And this is me personally, because I've got the original C2S file that if I ever wanted to edit, I would start with that anyway. So it's on my computer. And then that PES file that I take to my embroidery machine or my VP3 or whatever is on my USB stick. Cause my USB stick is not the place where I store all my designs. It's just a transportation mode, so to speak, to get my embroidery design from my computer to my machine. Great. That's awesome. So helpful. What other questions do we have? Anything? No, not too many. There are real, uh, several are going to go download it. And I see that, um, yeah, the, uh, well, of course, does it work on a Mac or an iPad? So definitely works on the on the Mac. Yeah, but not the iPad, right? Right. Yeah, you need a full version of your operating system. So a full version of Windows and a full version of the Mac OS is the operating system that it would work on. Yeah. And then Candy Bray, she asked, "What does that uh, PES version nine mean?" So. As Brother and Baby Lock update their machines, they often uh, update their format. And so we have the ability to save in the most recent version. Some of your older machines would benefit by saving in a, a PES version six and lower. Right. And can you yeah, save it in VIP four? Yes, you can. Yes, VP, yeah, VP4, we do save into that too. So yeah, those newer formats as machines evolved, they have the ability to do things that the older machine didn't. So used to, when I first started embroidering, uh, my machine didn't trim the uh, jump stitches. And so as the machines evolved, the design format had to evolve, to evolve to include the information to tell the new machine to trim right here um, you know, instead of just doing a jump. So right. newer formats contain more information. Yeah. And then Kimberly McIntyre asks, can you bring in an EPS file? What is yes, an EPS can. file? What is that? It's an artwork type file. It stands for- uh, But can you Catholic bring that into um, Embroidery Toolshed? Me. Yeah, okay. and the Embroidery Toolshed, let me double check here. We'll look while we're right here. If it'll read it, it will write to it. So if we do our save as or, or either bring in artwork. So I, nope, I don't see that. So yeah. no, so, not in just embroidery tool shed. That would be yeah. in perfect embroidery pro. Yeah, it is a free program. So it's going to have some limited abilities um, for sure. And Patricia uh, Swatzel is having some trouble finding the free monthly pro projects. So here we are, we're running, we'll run that uh, in the ticker. And oh, Candy Bray, well, we can't wait to see your sweet shop. Can't wait to see what you've done. And here, it, Dawn Andrew has also posted it, the link to the Small Town Charm in the chat here. So if you find Dawn Andrew's uh, comment, that's the link, just like you see on the ticker below. Okay, and Sharon Crowder says she's enjoying, um, she just purchased PEP, which and PEP, we call it PEP. It's our Perfect Embroidery Pro, our full digitizing program. And she's learning uh, by the YouTube presentations, which is a great way to learn, you know. And if, um, if you are using YouTube, uh, those so free software lessons to learn, I suggest that you have two monitors. You have your embroidery software on your laptop or your computer. And then on YouTube, you're on your phone or maybe a tablet, or if you actually have two monitors at home, then you know watch the YouTube on one monitor and do replicate the steps that you are watching in YouTube in the software as you watch, because you can always hit pause on YouTube, right? Yeah, it's like muscle memory. Yeah, it, and it's a great way to learn because you're, you know, you're just jumping right in and uh, getting those steps down. You know, that's how I do it. What did she do? And then I pause and I do it again. What did she do? And pause. Do it again. That's a great way to learn. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see. 
Oh, and that explains why VIP versus VIP three never knew. Oh yeah, you know, it's all this tech technology. And okay. Ann Dilbeck, she wants to know, will Pep ever be made for Mac? Well, two years ago, we oh, released yeah. a free a Mac version. So if you already own Pep, yeah. you most so really, I mean, yes. Yeah, can I go back and show them where to get the information for Mac since we've oh. had a couple of questions on that? So yeah. we'll go back yeah, to my um, webpage here. So on our inspiredbydime.com webpage, if you click on software and Mac, it will tell you what you need to do to install your Dime Inspiration Series software on your Mac. You have to download this free translator to get that to work. And so if you bought PEP years ago or another software, you can now install it on your Mac OS. So just go and do these steps that are aligned here, that are um, laid out here. And you can put it on your Mac as long as it is, like we said, a full operating system. So like Big Sur, Catalina, those, not your iPads or your right. iPhone. Awesome. So yeah. hopefully she'll, you know, I, I guess she already has Mac, Mac um, Pep and she'll just get it loaded on her Mac. Yep. So anyway, well, you did a wonderful job today, Ashley Jones. <laughs> Thank you. You know, if we were in a, in a, at a quilt show or in a store in a classroom, at the very end, everybody would go. <laughs> right? <laughs> she always does such a great job. Love it. Really love it. Thank you for joining me today. Thank all of you for watching. It was fun today. Guess what we're doing next week? Joanne Banco, I heard. Joanne Banco. So let me pull up. There we go. She's going to be here at 1 o'clock, February 11th. And uh, she is the author of Wrapped in Embroidery. Plus, she's a brother ambassador, a frequent guest on It's So Easy. And she's an embroidery extraordinaire. So we're going to have an awful lot to talk about next week. And I hope you'll join me then. Thanks again, Ashley, for joining. Thank you for having me. Okay. Bye for now, everyone. Bye.